Hello everyone, I am Ullas Agarwal and in this video we are going to discuss question number 23 of the first mock test which is there in the NTA Abhyas app. So without wasting any time, let us uh, start discussing the question. It's a very important and nice question on uh, magnetism which you can see in the screen which I have shared with you. Just hold on a second. Okay. So this is the question right in front of you. If you want, you can like pause the video and uh, see the question, read it, understand it. If you have not already done it, and there is a diagram also which is given for this question like this. Okay. So let me just explain you the uh, situation. Once you have like uh, uh, read the question, you can just uh, go over to my explanation. So here we have got uh, uh, two magnetic field regions. All right. So there is a upper magnetic field region in which the magnetic field is, let's say, call it B0 and the lower magnetic field, which is four times the magnetic field of previous one. Let's call it uh, the 4B0. Now, the boundary of these two magnetic fields that is taken to be the origin and y-axis is taken to be upward, x-axis is taken towards left, uh, sorry, towards right, and z-axis is out of the plane of the screen that you can see. Now, what is done is a charged particle, positively charged, is thrown up with some velocity, let's call it V0. And this V0 it is in fact given to be some pi. So pi is the velocity in meter per second. Now this charged particle is present in the magnetic field which is in K cap. So definitely this uh, charged particle is going to get a force from the magnetic field. And because its initial velocity is perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field, the motion is, motion is going to be circular. So the force that it is going to get is in the direction of uh, V cross B, the Lorentz force. So V is in uh, a J cap initially and B is in K cap. So if you do the cross product, you will get the cross product to be in I cap, which means it's going to get the force towards I cap, which means that's where the center of the circular motion lies. And so the center of the circular motion will be somewhere, let's say here at this point B, and the charged particle is undergoing circular motion like this. So let me just complete the circle here. Okay, so this is how the circle will look like. Now the thing is this particle will go around the circle and ultimately it will reach uh, this point. Let's call this as Q, this point Q. Now, while going from this initial point, let's call it O origin from to this point Q, how much time is taken? So that is half the time taken to complete the circle. So time period of circular motion, which is two pi M by QB, uh, so let's call this time period to be small t and b is the magnetic field let's call it a b naught okay so the time taken to go from uh, point o to point q along that green half circle so that is equal to small t by 2 because half the time taken to complete the circle so o to q the time is t by 2 now what about the remaining journey because it is asked once it is hitting or crossing the x-axis from below, when this particle reaches point Q also, but it is reaching the or crossing the x-axis from above. Let me just use a better contrast. Yeah, so yellow, I mean violet. Yeah, so here the charged particle is crossing the x-axis, but from top, not from the below. So while crossing Q, it's crossing from the top, which doesn't satisfy the criteria which is mentioned in the question. So let the particle travel for some more time. But the thing is, after Q, it is reaching another magnetic field, which is four times. So what is the time period now in this new magnetic field? Let's say the time period is T dash. Now, because this magnetic field now is four times of B naught, time period will be T by four. T by four. So the time period of circular motion in the lower magnetic field is one four T by four. What about the radius? So if previously uh, the radius was, let's call it as R. So you know the radius formula to be MV by QB. Now the magnetic field is B0. Corresponding to that, let's say the radius is R. But now the magnetic field is becoming 4B0. And if you replace this B0 with 4B0, you will see that the radius will become 1 fourth, which means now the radius will become 1 fourth for the second part of the circular motion, which is starts from point Q. Now, at point Q, the velocity is in downward direction. And the 
magnetic field is in k cap velocity is in minus j cap so if you do v cross b you will get the direction to be in minus i v cross b means minus j cross k which is in minus i cap which means the force when the particle is at point q the force is in minus i cap which means that's where the center lies so center will lie somewhere let's call it this point let's call this point as point uh, point z or maybe some other point maybe point s and this is where the center is now the thing is the new radius is 1/4 only so it is r by 4 and with this s as the center now it's undergoing circular motion like this and exactly when again it covers the half time period a half circle in half new time period it's going to cross the x axis from uh below what does it mean it means that when it is going to cross the x axis from this point let's call this point as point uh uh point point m all right so this this point m this is the time at which it is crossing the x axis from below and is going up now what are the distances well r by 4 this also r by 4 so total mq is equal to r by 2 mq means which distance okay mq means this entire distance or let me just put it in light color this distance yeah so mq is r by 2 so when it is going to cross the x axis from below from point m mq is r by 2 so what about the other distance the other distance is diameter minus r by 2 so diameter is 2r minus r by 2 so which is 3r by 2 so by the time this particle is going to cross the x axis from below uh, it has already covered a total displacement of 3r by 2 from point o so 3r by 2 is the overall displacement in x axis when it's going to cross the x axis from below okay so what is the displacement displacement is equal to 3r by 2 what is the time taken well time taken is equal to how much well first this particle will go along this uh, larger circle uh, for how much time for time t by 2 next it's going to go along the smaller circle again for semi circle only but along this smaller circle along this green circle uh, sorry red circle and how much time is taken again time taken to cover semi circle means t dash which is the new time period by 2 which is old time period by 8 i mean t dash by 2 is t by 8 because the new time period is 1/4 of the old time period because the magnetic field become four times so time period will become 1 by 4 times so what is the total time taken total time taken is equal to time taken to go along the bigger half semi circle or half circle plus time taken to go through the smaller half circle so the total time will be equal to 5t by 8 now what is the average velocity in x direction so average velocity in x direction is equal to displacement along x direction divided by time taken now what is the displacement along x direction 3r by 2 what is the time taken 5t by 8 so overall what we are able to get is 12r by 5t now what is the radius the radius is given by mv by qb and 5 is there what about the time period time period is 2 pi m by qb so this is the answer now the thing is many terms are going to get cancelled out qb qb and mm so and then this 6 so we get 6v by 5 pi Now it's given that v equal to pi, so v and pi gets cancelled out, and we get six by five, which is one point two. So it is one point two, which is the average velocity along x direction by the time it is going to cross the x-axis second time, which means uh, from below the from below the x-axis it's crossing and going to above the x-axis. So it is one point two meter per second. Now here we can see that. it is give arcs average speed so our average speed wise doesn't make any sense actually because average speed along x axis doesn't make any sense why because average speed is a scalar quantity and it can't have any component like that along x axis 
also in case of average speed we are concerned with the distance and not displacement so i think there should be some correction in this question and actually what should be asked is average velocity component along x direction in that case this question will be correct anyway we'll stop here